I've tried many different productivity apps over the years. This is my current list in no particular order, but I'm labeling all of these as essential to my productivity system. Stay tuned at the end of the video, I'll share a few honorable mentions as well and some helpful utilities throughout. Hey everyone, I'm Bill. I do project engineering as a day job, so I'm blessed and cursed <laughs> to enjoy this stuff both professionally and at home. If you don't yet have a productivity system or you're new to this whole productivity space, you can go back and watch my other video about how to set up a productivity system for beginners where we lay the foundation of applications that you'll need to get started in productivity. A to-do list is essential for productivity and project management. I've been a long time user of Todoist, got projects going back to 2018. That's really where I started to use it in earnest. I had been using it before, not very effectively though. Starting to use Todoist in grad school was really where it started to click for me. I would take the syllabus at the beginning of the class and add in all the assignments into my to-do app, different dates that there were tests or quizzes or exams or due dates. Every class got its own folder or project, and I can definitely attribute my success in that graduate degree to having a sound process with Todoist to help keep me on track throughout the semester. Now, Todoist is great because it works across platforms. It has Windows, Mac, iPad, iPhone, Android. You can get to it anywhere. It even has a web app, which is nice. Sometimes I would need to check my schedule while still at work, which I could go into the web app, look at my to-do list. What do I have to do later tonight to make sure I had my thoughts straight and was on track for what I needed to be doing? Todoist is still one of the easiest task managers, in my opinion, to get data into. It has natural language input, so you can type something like, pick up the kids from school tomorrow and it will automatically pick up the word tomorrow, set it for being due on that date. There's also different characters to add to projects. While you're typing it in, you can use hashtags and at symbols for projects and labels. You can set reminders. You can now set how long you think the task is going to take, all with pretty natural language input, how you would speak the task to another person you can type it into Todoist and it pretty much figures it out. I like the way that it handles recurring tasks best. I've used Apple Reminders recently. I've used Things 3. Todoist is always the one that I keep coming back to. Uh, and it's pretty much always because of how recurring tasks work. It's not in your face about, hey, stupid, you missed this task yesterday. It's overdue. It has an overdue list, it's at the top. It's a pretty subdued list. You can even hide it now if you don't wanna see tasks that are overdue and you just wanna focus on what's in front of you, which is great. A lot of the tasks that I have in there are recurring. A lot of them doesn't really matter if I do it every day or not. It's not a life or death situation. So having the option to easily reschedule all of them, push them to the next occurrence, or even set it up so when you check off the recurring task, it doesn't schedule the next occurrence. So an example would be a task that you wanna do every other day, run the vacuum. If you schedule that task for Monday, the next event would be on Wednesday. If you didn't run the vacuum on Monday and instead you ran the vacuum on Tuesday, when you check that task off, you can set it to then schedule the next event for Thursday. So it's kind of a rolling list and Todoist is smart enough to understand that, hey, you didn't do it on Monday, you wanna do it every other day. Today's Tuesday, when you check it off, you don't need the occurrence on Wednesday, you need the occurrence on Thursday. That trips up a lot of different other uh, to-do list applications and it's a, kind of a minor nit, but it's one of those quality of life features that really makes this app worth using and why it's stuck around for me for so long. Next up is Fantastical. Now, when you mention Fantastical, you kind of have to caveat the crap out of it. Yes, it's a subscription service. Yes, it is absurdly expensive for a calendar application. So I understand those two points. But it's the only way that I've found success seeing my to-do list and my calendar in the same application. 
Now there are free ways to do this, right? Todoist integrates with Gmail with a two-way sync, but I don't typically use Google Calendar. But Fantastical kind of does it all. It has a great user interface, does have great features. The developers keep the app up to date when new versions of iOS are released or Mac are released. You get things like updated widgets. They support, you know, whatever. They support the application is the point. And that's what you're paying the money for. So it kind of sucks that you don't really own anything at the end of the day, but it is a good application. It has shortcut support has different calendar sets that you can use. You can tie them to focus modes. The downside here is obviously that it's a paid app and it's an Apple only uh, application. There's no Windows support, Linux, Android, none of that. I have a whole video devoted to Apple Notes, which is my notes app of choice. But to me, it's simple interface and its ability to capture information from a wide variety of sources and handle it so well, both online and offline, is why Apple Notes is my note-taking app of choice. You can toss in a PDF, throw in an image, scan in a document from your iPhone. The downside with Apple Notes is it's not an open system. It doesn't really play nice with the rest of the applications that productivity weirdos like me like to use. So, you know, it doesn't do things like Readwise Sync it does now have note linking. It's pretty basic, but it, functionality exists. And if you use something like the podcast application called Snipped, where you can take little snippets of podcasts, generates the text, can also sync with Readwise or other applications like Obsidian. Apple Notes doesn't do that. I'd love to see that in the future. I doubt that that's going to happen. Apple Notes is kind of a no frills notes app that's built into all of your Apple devices for free. So I like that as well. Gmail is my preferred email client of choice at this point, and I've managed email through many different programs throughout the years, Outlook, Apple Mail, Spark Mail, and a few others. But this year I discovered keyboard shortcuts with Gmail. So I have a keyboard shortcut for labeling items, for archiving items, and for deleting things to get them out of my inbox. And that's been game changing. I, I really only want to look at email maybe once a week for personal projects at this point. I'm not getting a lot of emails related to that. It's all kind of marketing stuff, things I do on the side when I have a ordering something online, I get a receipt, I get the shipping notifications, get bank statements, that sort of thing. A lot of stuff that you don't really need to keep or save. So being able to clear out you know, 100 to 200 emails a week in like five or 10 minutes has been super beneficial to me. I don't try to waste a lot of time. I don't like doing it on a phone or a tablet. It's a little bit cumbersome to label and archive things. For me, at least, this is my system. So doing it on a desktop about once a week has been the cadence that I've kept this year with the goal of actually being inbox zero. Next is Apple Shortcuts. I do have a video detailing some shortcuts and how I've used them, how I've kind of wrapped my brain around the Apple Shortcuts app. It's essential to me because it has simplified monotonous tasks that I do every day. I have a shortcut for when I write morning pages. I click a button, it creates a note in my Apple Notes. It's tagged with morning pages. It has the date, it has the time, it has the location. And then I scan in my handwritten notes from my notebook into Apple Notes. I have some shortcuts to turn. Turn always on display on or off on my Apple Watch. That's useful. I have a shortcut to get in to change how long the screen turns on, the phone and the iPad. I use that for working out in the gym where I want the phone to stay on during the workout so I can see what I've written down. Now, the big caveat here is shortcuts is so much more powerful than so much more powerful and capable than what I'm using it for. But I've found such good success in keeping things simple. And so I want to share that with everybody else too. You don't need some complicated system of pushing data all around through all these different apps. Sometimes keeping it simple is the way that you get the most impact out of something. Next is Google Sheets. 
Would I even be able to call myself an engineer if I didn't put a spreadsheet on this list? Now I had been using Office 365 in Excel and I recently switched back to Google Sheets this year. I had created some sort of dashboards and a lot of things for my budget spreadsheet, tracking the stock market and different investments that I had with um, you know APIs that were connected outside of Excel. I did this when I was on my Windows PC. When I switched over to Mac, they never quite worked right. The external sources in Excel on Mac, just it isn't the same interface. So I kind of found myself paying for a service that Eh, I wasn't using anymore and I didn't really need the cloud storage that came along with it. So I made the decision to switch back to Google Sheets. My wife likes Google Sheets better anyways. She uses that. I can share documents more easily with her in Google Sheets and we can collaborate on the uh, budget spreadsheet that we have set up. So as an engineer, I love a good spreadsheet. Google Sheets actually has a lot of cool features. Some of the graphs are actually really good and it has everything that I need for uh, home use for sure. The final item on the list is more of a utility, but it's one that I don't think that I could live without, and that's 1Password. I never really understood why somebody would go get a password manager application subscription. It didn't make any sense to me. It was like, just put your passwords in a spreadsheet, right? Well, one, that's not really secure. And two, 1Password is also a great cross-platform application. It has plugins for Google Chrome, Safari, apps for Windows, for Mac, for the phones, and it works everywhere. Now you might ask, well, why wouldn't you just use in use the built-in password manager in like Google Chrome if you're on that platform or you know on your phone if you have an iPhone, there's iCloud Keychain passwords. It's actually pretty good now. At the time when I had one password, I had multiple different devices. So I was on a Windows laptop, Windows PC, uh, I had an iPad and I had an iPhone. So I needed something that crossed those paths. Now I'm kind of Mac and an iPhone only. I do still have a Windows PC. I don't use it as often as much anymore though. I like that 1Password's more than just passwords. You can have secure notes, you can have credit cards. It's easier to share with other people. If I need to throw a password to a family member, so on and so forth, you can export a link that auto times out. All right, so we've covered a lot here in this video. We've covered a to-do list, we've covered a calendar, we've covered a notes app, and we've covered my favorite utility, 1Password and spreadsheets. Here's a few honorable mentions that I think are worth noting. First up is Obsidian. So I have Readwise Sync set up to go into Obsidian. It is kind of a pain that it adds some friction to my process, but it's nice to know that I have one place for all of my book notes to go. If I am thinking about a project or have an idea, you know, and I think that I've read about this in the past, I can go into Obsidian and search my different notes. If I need a snippet or a quote or whatever, pull that over into the Apple note and I have a pretty streamlined process then you know I know where things are at least obsidian is a pretty great tool altogether it has iCloud sync for free the note linking is next level if you're a customization person then it has a plug-in for anything that you would want to do in obsidian and it's a pretty fast app to use and you own all the data that goes into it Things is a runner-up, in my opinion, for a to-do list app, and it, it's mainly because it's Mac only, and I don't really like the way that it sets up recurring tasks. I have used it extensively for long periods of time. I've done this twice where I've moved everything from Todoist into Things, and then I've ended up going back to Todoist. So I've done that twice. I haven't learned my lesson, and I might not learn that lesson in the future. But Things is a one-time paid application. The developers do a great job of keeping up to date with the different iOS and Mac OS releases. It's fast, it's pretty simple, the user interface is great. So if you're on Mac, 
it's a good option to consider when you're uh, in need of a task manager. And then last on the list is a service called Backblaze that I found out about this year. As I was researching, now that I have a bunch of video files to store, started down the path of, do I need a desktop attached storage? What I want network attached storage? Should I just get a big external hard drive? Backblaze keeps a backup of your computer. It's a monthly subscription service. The plan that I have, they keep uh, 30 days of a backup and it's not meant to be like iCloud or OneDrive where you're accessing it all the time. You think of this as like a restore point where if you had a file get corrupted or a drive die, you know, you can go get a new drive, download all the stuff from the cloud, put it onto the new drive. It's more of a CYA option than it is a cloud storage option. They do offer an additional service if you do end up getting a network attached storage system like a Synology or Thunder, uh, Thunder, what do they call them? Thunder Bays. You can add on another uh, part to the subscription service and they'll back up a NAS as well for a few more dollars a month. It's really good peace of mind and when you really start to dive deep into do I have a backup of this data? It's wild to think about <laughs> how many copies of each thing you need and where you need them to be before you actually have a true backup according to the IT community who I believe. So that's it for today. If you wanted to hear more about how I use Apple Notes, you can go check out this video. Otherwise, until next time, catch you later. See ya.